Hello, everybody, and welcome to What's Up, the podcast where we talk about everything electrical and the future of test and measurement. My name is Darcy, and I'm here to delve deep into some of the biggest topics in our industry. Today's guest is Nicholas Vetterstrand, who has over 20 years experience within the industry. He specializes in relay protection, circuit breaker, and primary testing. Today, we are talking all about digital twin and the future of smart solutions. So let's find out what's up with Nicholas Vetterstrand. We usually start the podcast by doing three questions. We call them the power-up questions just to get everybody kind of like all, all fired up. Yeah, sure. Shoot. Okay, you ready? Yes. Okay, Nicholas, where are you currently based? Oh, that's a difficult question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working from home. <laughs> what oh, about you? Well, where's your home? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm based in, in uh, Danderyd in Sweden. So one of our factories, that's my location. But like you said, we work mo mainly from home nowadays, I guess. Um, and what was the last article you contributed to? Uh, we made an article in tech, transformer technology, which might seem a bit, little, bit, little bit odd for protection. I was going to say, yeah. But, <laughs> but they had an issue in April. 2000, yeah, 20, 2022, uh, where they focused on new technologies and new solutions. So they asked us actually, can oh, wow. we do an, do an article about that? Because they have obviously read about it and heard about it. That is a very interesting and futuristic topic. Yeah, that's wicked. Um, and what was the last conference Digital Twin was presented at? We presented it in March this year. Uh, in uh, Texas A&M Relay Conference here in uh, Dallas, where we're actually oh, yeah. filming this. We're in Dallas at the moment, ladies mm -hmm. and gentlemen. So just a little bit of information for you. Mm -hmm. So let's dive straight into it. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, let's great. Go. So when it comes to the term digital twin, it has really come into its own in the power industry over the past few years. So can you just explain to us what actually is it? Yeah, sure. I, I can do that. It's uh, simply said, it's a digital copy of a physical asset. Okay. Uh, and that has uh, been used, actually, if you look to the physical part of it, it's been used for decades in, in different CAD programs to just make sure that the dimensions are well fit when you're designing, for instance, a substation. So the relay, if you do everything well, has the perfect size or similar size when you get the sure. drawings out as it has uh, in real life, which makes the, the, the uh, drawings accurate. You don't have to redo them. Uh, but w the other part I see is the functional uh, copy of, okay. of the, the, the real asset. Uh, and that's obviously used for simulation. So it behaves accurately, uh, exactly like the real device would do, which... Uh, uh, makes possibilities to perform activities virtually. Absolutely. It sounds like the testing capability for that could be, you know, pretty endless. Um, can we just dive deeper, though, into how practically how does it work? Sure. And I, I go with the functional perspective then, since that's the interesting part for, from us, uh, for us. That's, sure. So uh, the importance there is that it's the same behavior of, of the digital twin as it is in reality, which means you can use it for, for many things then. Uh, and the other part which is key is the data. So it okay. uses the same data, like settings files, test files should be exactly the same. Yeah. Nothing that you have to tweak by going to the virtual world versus uh, the, the real world. So that's the key thing to get accurate simulations which are mm. useful to do virtually. So it's like an exact replication, basically, in yeah, yeah, the virtual that, that's world. That's what it means uh, need to be. Otherwise, it's it's not as useful, I would say. Yeah, and it's really interesting to see that digital twin is being used in lots of different areas. But within relay protection, which is your specialty after mm -hmm. all, um, how does one go about creating a digital twin? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, but if we back up a bit and, and trying to see what what is it that we try to simulate here. Yeah. It, it's a device, nowadays it's a device which has uh, more or less a lot of software okay. and some hardware. It's a computer mm. more or less with some interfaces where, where, yeah. where the, the software on board is, is the key thing to get the right behaviors. So by using the, the same code, same software in the real device as the digital twin, you ensure to get the same behavior in the end. So what you need to do then is, of course, to add what's missing from the uh, hardware side into the virtual world. And that's, of course, the connections. So you have some analog inputs and, and so on, digital inputs. You need to, to virtually make that 
designed to, to work with the software. Uh, and then the other and last part, I would say, is the interaction. How do we communicate from our digital twin to other digital twins? So within the industry, people usually have a very kind of established routine of maintenance and testing. Yeah. So what would the benefit be of adding a digital twin over just doing you know, regular testing methodologies? Oh, I, I would say there are many, many, many. <laughs> the list is going to be yeah, very long, the list going to be long. So how much time do we have? <laughs> uh, no, the, the, just to mention a few, the, you can do a lot of activities remotely. You don't need to have the physical assets. Right. Uh, you can work many in parallel with the same object since it's virtual. You can virtually copy it with oh, yeah. the same settings and then use it uh, in multiple locations or for multiple uh, persons. Uh, one thing is that when this testing normally is done is is uh, one part at least is in commissioning in and that phase of a project when when uh, commissioning a substation is very stressful because getting the the substation up online to start generating revenue that's when it's really yeah. crucial so that's the time when the manager starts coming and looking over your shoulder. Are you done? Yeah, yet? is it finished yet? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So so that's a critical part. And that's, of course, very stressful if something goes wrong in that yeah. time. So, so to have tested that prior to you enter that time and know that functionally, functionally it's going to work, yeah. it's a huge benefit. Uh, other things is like you have experts uh, which may not be able to be... Uh, at site when these uh, things Absolutely. happen they probably work in in in, uh, in the factory somewhere and uh, supporting many different activities uh, they can be suddenly be available because now you can set up the same environment as you have yeah. locally in the commissioning you can do it virtually and, and a question can easily be be supported so if you look to activities point of view you can see in training uh, you can see in factor acceptance test a remote support uh, or other things like uh, if you have a physical distance which is huge between substations uh, you you might do mm -hmm. tests uh, virtually and and it's very easy to change settings in different relays or start the tests uh, whereas in reality you have to travel a few miles yeah. or be two persons that that work with it it just brings it all together and makes it all kind of like economical yeah. and much quicker i guess exactly and and the last thing which would be a little <laughs> bit like superman thing is the super test set that sounds I mean, very intriguing yeah <laughs> I mean, in reality, we would never build a test set which has like 20 currents and mm. 20 volts uh, voltage outputs. It's just too expensive, heavy, and so on. But in virtual world, if you want to do bus bar testing with a lot of currents and voltages, you could virtually do that. That's yeah. no problem. That list feels like it could go on and on, but I do want yeah. to go back to something you said, which is yes. FAT, so factory acceptance test. Yes. So what is the benefit of doing that kind of for those who are going to be undertaking the testing? And normally when you do a factor acceptance test is that you send all equipment to one location. Uh, by doing this virtually, this is of course not valid anymore. Mm -hmm. So, so you, you, you can skip, skip that part and save a lot of money and time yeah. by, by doing Which that. Which is what everybody is here to do, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, that's giving us benefits. Uh, then another part is that you, you put all these equipments together to make sure that they work together. That's what the factory acceptance yeah. test is about. And, and uh, by doing that, you have to do a lot of temporary connections. Uh, which you don't have to do if you do it virtually. You do that, but it's virtual, so it's very easy yeah. to connect rather than making a physical cable connected to, to somewhere, which are not, not going to reuse in reality. Uh, so, so that's one part of it. The, the other part I would say is uh, specialists. You have them sure. available through doing it virtually, since they, have, they may not always have the time to be on site where they do this. And if they do, then you have a travel cost to get there. So you save cost again and also make sure that you have the specialist available to yeah, support you in this activity. And then I also would like to mention the pandemic. Yeah. Now we have been, uh, we, we cannot meet anymore or there yeah. are social distancing and, and things blocking us. 
but doing tests virtually that's possible because you can work from home and you Absolutely. can do it uh, when, whenever you have time so to speak so it's been a huge benefit to those who have adapted this technology uh, during the pandemic yeah. i think this just exposed how important the ability to do remote support really is because you never know what might happen but mm -hmm. actually practically for digital twin like what does that remote support look like yeah the remote support uh, is you can imagine when you have someone working out in the field mm -hmm. Uh, and they probably uh, can run into problems. I mean, that happens all the time. Commissioning is the phase yeah. where you, you have some unexpected events going on. And then it might be that this uh, person cannot solve that uh, on its own. So what you do today is probably probably pick up your phone and disturb someone or send <laughs> and an email. And they're at like 5 a.m. across the world, yeah, aren't Yeah, exactly. They? <laughs> and then you have the time difference, might be not in, in, in the office. And so, so there, there are a lot of hassle. And, and describing problems over emails and get getting that right is not so yeah. um, uh, easy. Uh, so now with the digital twin, what you can do is, is to send the settings file uh, and the version number of, of the asset you want to test and you can send even the test file that this is what I use to test it off uh, to the expert in the factory uh, and then you can go sleep if the, <laughs> there was a time difference And let them issue. get on with solving the problem. <laughs> and then they go solve the problem for you. No, the, the, in, in the daytime of the expert then he can just uh, upload the files making sure the, the environment is accurate, testing and see, okay, see the same problem appearing and and then yeah. do the changes tweaks that's needed retest again with the new changes and send back the files to the to the one in the the field and then he know or she know that the, the solution going to work since that's tested digitally yeah. in the digital twin. So it's a, a lot of savings there, I would say. I feel like the benefits of this could literally go on and on. We could write <laughs> like a whole list about this, but if you combined it with virtual relay testing like what mm -hmm. what would that look like and like what would the overall benefit of that be yeah if i if i describe how that's done in a way yeah. then then uh, i would say that you you do the same thing actually as you do in the reality oh, okay, yeah. and and that's the the whole point with it so so you don't do different things virtually as you do in the real life so you use our software both for the relays and and the relay test set you prepare the test and the settings file uh, you, now the only thing is that you don't have any real currents and voltages to deal with sure. so now you have a different output and at this current stage uh, this is decided to be comtrade which is a standardized format okay. describing voltages and current uh, you have to decide then in in the software uh, make the virtual connection so so you see which voltage is going where and so on but that's just rather easy just to click away uh, then you can do the tests and and these kind of tests since it's through comtrade is called open loop tests okay. so it's not a fully functional relay test as maybe relay tester is is used to but still has a lot of validity and you can do a lot of do uh, different tests to check that the timing is right through the disturbance recorder which is built into the relay uh, and of course if if you find something which is not exactly correct which you always do which if you don't do <laughs> then you know you're doing something wrong. there's always got to be a yeah, mistake exactly. somewhere to know you're doing it right uh, then of course you can do the adjustments <laughs> to make yeah. sure it's correct and then retest the file make sure everything's properly and when you you are done you kind of update used updated files in reality and then then everything should work smoothly mm -hmm. if the hardware works right this is quite a recent technology, you know, yes. it's kind of we're just on the horizon of what the possibilities could be. So um, are you aware of any resources or anything you can share with our watchers and listeners that might help them, you know, learn a bit more? Sure, but just to to make people not scared about yeah. it, th this is should actually be no difference like working with your real unit. So so uh, yeah. if you can work with the, the reality, so to speak, you can also work with the digital twin. However, there are of course some differences between the digital connection and real connection, etc. So the, the, you have to, to take that into account. Yeah, take sure. that into account. So. What do you do? Yeah, it's currently who we who are active in this part is Megger and Siemens. So you have obviously to contact one of us and we will share information, possibly trial version if you want to test uh, this reality yeah, uh, in, in your environment, so to speak. Uh, but otherwise, we have written articles, we have papers, so uh, much of those things are on our website. So you can go there to find more information, okay. I would say.
And for our last question, um, I'm going to dig a bit deeper into your brain, Nicholas. And I want to talk about what the future would hold for smart solutions in this arena. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, a very interesting question. Yeah, that's why <laughs> we could, asked who it. Who could predict We need future. that crystal ball, like yeah, you said, in the middle. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, if go step back to what we have. We have the com trade format, as we talked about, and that's giving us a very good start, I would say. It's a pioneering start, but how do we go from there? Uh, and, and that would be feedback loop uh, to do closed loop testing. Uh, so some kind of communication, standardized communication to uh, be able to do the test like you do the relay test today mm -hmm. uh, without going into the disturbance recorder and trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, then you get the responses directly to your test equipment and can see how much time it took before a trip. So it will be more, I should say, smooth for yeah. the general tester if we go that way. And to be able to do that, I think uh, the, the, the standardization has to happen. And, and actually, IEC has already recognized this. And they have a working group uh, which are focused in, on digital twins. And we, we are in contact with them already to make sure that they, they take care of, of our situation with this. So, so mm -hmm. it's, it, as, as one um, work, uh, case, work, work case, uh, so, so yeah. they can really see if, if they take that into account in the standard. Yeah. So the communication is, is really key, I think. Uh, another thing is, is probably what is a digital twin? The very first question. <laughs> yeah, the very first question. So if they can define and, and say, these are the criteria to call it a digital twin, that will help everybody to say that now we have a digital twin. Now we could be, when you don't have a standard, it could be differences and Absolutely. that can lead to complications. So so I think that is, but once you have uh, this interface and, and the, uh, the the description of what is it is or what it should be. I I think more vendors will come into the arena and and do their version of digital twins, which makes it possible to build that digital twin community, and that is where we get the real value of of having the digital twin system because now you can simulate not only a smaller part of a system now you can re simulate a whole the, the whole one. system in in, uh, in a more accurate way th than you can do today yeah. so that's where i'm thinking the future is oh, moving wow. so we hope yeah that we, we can see the future oh goodness <laughs> well if it turns out like that that would be absolutely amazing yeah um, that's crazy uh, the future yeah the future does look incredible for digital twin and i really appreciate you taking the time to come and talk to us today so i hope you have enjoyed it as much as we have absolutely thank you so uh, much Darcy. thank you for coming thank you for watching and listening and have a great day